Hi, we are going to finish working through our problem set for chapter five material by completing the last problem, which is a big one. This is looking at the combustion of sugar uh, to form carbon dioxide and water. This is something you could do by um, introducing a flame and oxygen and burning it like you would a campfire, or this is something your body does in a stepwise fashion um, to take energy from the sugar by converting it into carbon dioxide and water. So looking at our problem, we're given our chemical equation and it is not balanced. Um, the information that's given to us is that we have 3.5 grams of our sugar and we have 1.5 grams of our oxygen. And we're trying to find the mass of the carbon dioxide that will form. When it says theoretically form, that's the same thing as saying do a stoichiometry problem. And when we see that we're given two masses, that tells us that we need to do a limiting reactant problem. Because as it stands now, we're not sure if we'll have leftover sugar or leftover oxygen once the reaction is complete. So we're gonna follow um, the, we'll follow these steps to complete this problem. We're gonna balance the equation. We're going to calculate um, our molar masses, and we're going to do that only for the things that we need, which is going to be our carbon dioxide, our oxygen, and our um, sugar. After that, we're going to uh, calculate the amount of o CO2 that would form from the sugar if all of it reacts. And then we're going to calculate the amount of CO2 that forms if all of the oxygen reacts. Then we're going to go ahead and compare those masses of CO2 and decide which is our limiting reactant. <clears throat> Okay, so at this point, um, we're gonna have to start with balancing our equation. We have um, six carbon on one side, so we'll need a six in front of our carbon dioxide in the, the products. That way we have six carbons on both sides. I'm gonna put a six coefficient in front of my water too, because six times two will give me 12 hydrogen on my product side, and that matches the 12 hydrogen I have on my reactant side. I'm going to total up all the oxygen on my product side. I've got 6 times 2, that's 12, plus the 6 from my water. It gives me a total of 18 oxygen. I need to balance that out on my reactant side, but I need to make sure that I remember to account for the 6 oxygen in my sugar. I don't want to change the coefficient in front of the sugar. I want to change the coefficient in front of the oxygen. If I did it in front of the sugar, then I would have to change the six in the six in front of carbon dioxide and water. So 18 minus six is gonna give us the number of oxygen that we need to balance out this equation using the O2. Um, so that's gonna be 12. 12 divided by two, that's six oxygen that I need to balance, uh, oh, six dioxygen molecules I need to balance this out. And we have a balanced equation. All right, next I need the molar mass of CO2, O2, and sugar. We're gonna calculate this as we've been doing, um, and I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, abbreviate it. But the molar mass of our uh, C6H12O6 is calculated by adding up the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atom molar masses, um, and I get a total of 95. 0.994 grams per mole. The molar mass of my oxygen is just two times the molar mass of oxygen, um, and that's going to be 15.999. So if I add that up, I get 31.998 grams per mole. And the molar mass of my carbon dioxide is going to be equal to one carbon and two oxygens, molecular masses added together for a total of 44.01 grams per mole.
Now I have my conversion factors. <clears throat> I have my coefficient ratios and I have my molar masses. So I'm going to start with this 3. Point, so let's get this back. 3.5 grams of sugar. And convert this into the mass of carbon dioxide that forms. And this is again because I'm going from mass to mass. This is a three step um, <coughs> conversion. <coughs> I'm going to want to um, cancel out grams of my sugar. And so that's going to be the first thing I put in my first conversion factor on the bottom. So I have something um, grams of sugar in the denominator and the numerator. Um, and since I want to end up in units of grams of carbon dioxide, I'm going to put that on the, the numerator of my last conversion factor. So I end up with these units matching the units of what I calculate. So again, once we um, identify that we're going to have mass in uh, one of our conversion factors, that immediately leads us to using molar mass as a conversion factor because it's the only one that incorporates grams. So for our first one, I'm going to use my molar mass of sugar in one mole. I have 95.994 grams of sugar. And then for my carbon dioxide, I'll use the molar mass of carbon dioxide as well. So that's going to have uh, 44.01 grams making up each mole of carbon dioxide. <coughs> I can now complete this conversion by uh, making sure my mole units cancel. So I'll need moles of CO2 on the top of my conversion factor, so it'll cancel with the moles of CO2 on the bottom of my molar mass conversion and moles of sugar, C6H12O6, on the bottom of the conversion factor. So it'll cancel with moles of sugar that are at the top of the first conversion factor. I'm gonna go up and look at my coefficients and I can see um, I've got a six in front of CO2, so I'll put a six there uh, in front of moles of CO2, and I've got a one in front of sugar, so I'll put a one mole of sugar in the denominator. Great, now I can actually go ahead and calculate this. Um, by plugging it into my calculator, I'll um, divide 3.5 by 95.994, multiply it by six, and then multiply it by 44.01. Um, and when I plug that all in, I get 9.24 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, we are two thirds of the way done. Now we need to do the exact same process, but do it for oxygen. So I'm going to highlight this. My 3.5 grams of sugar, if I assume all of it reacts, I'll produce 9.24 grams of carbon dioxide. All right, now let's switch to oxygen. We start with 1.5 grams of oxygen. And again, we're going to be looking at a three-step conversion to convert mass of oxygen into the mass of CO2. Again, I'm going to um, want to end with grams of CO2, so I put that on the top of my last conversion factor. I'm going to want to make sure I cancel grams of oxygen, so I put that at the bottom of my first conversion factor. So that way the grams of oxygen are on the numerator and denominator and cancel out. Um, so at this point, I'm going to put in my molar masses for my first and last conversion factor, and one mole of oxygen, I'll have a mass of eight of 31.998 grams. And in one mole of carbon dioxide, I'll have 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. To make sure my mole units cancel, um, leaving me only with units of grams, I'm gonna make sure my moles of carbon dioxide are at the top of my middle conversion factor, and moles of oxygen are on the bottom of my middle conversion factor. Going up to my coefficients, I have a six in front of carbon dioxide and I have a six in front of oxygen. And that sets up my problem. If I plug this into a calculator, I'll divide 1.5 by 31.998. I'll multiply by six and divide by six, which is the same as multiplying by one. And then I'll multiply it by 44.01. 
and I calculate 2.06 grams of carbon dioxide. All right, now we're on our fifth step. Um, our 1.5 grams of oxygen produce 2.06 grams of carbon dioxide. I'm gonna compare these. And my 2.06 grams of CO2 is less than my 9.24 grams of CO2. So that means whatever produced 2.06 grams of carbon dioxide is my limiting reactant. I look back and that was the oxygen. So oxygen is the limiting reactant. And that means that my theoretical yield is 2.06. I won't use this 9.24 at all. All right, so now I know what my theoretical yield is when I have a limiting reactant problem looking at the combustion of sugar. So now, um, continuing to the last one, I collect three grams of carbon dioxide experimentally um, when I combust glucose, and the question is, what is the percent yield? So percent yield is gonna equal the actual yield that I, ca I measure. So it's like measured divided by my theoretical yield. This is what we calculated and multiply it by 100. So in this case, that's 3.00 grams that we measure divided by 2.06 grams times 100. And that's going to give me a yield of 145%, which tells me that something went wrong in my reaction. Um, I probably had side reactions or there was a mis... Um, uh, like a um, a miss uh, a mistake in actually adding these two reagents together and weighing them out. So I have a yield of one hundred and forty five percent, and I formed two point oh six in theory, but I actually got three. So I've got something extra in my in my um, whatever I collected my product in, and that is working through a limiting reactant problem.